In this video, I'm going to uh, comment on a couple ways that people will incorrectly perform the right side lying scissor slides that is designed to teach you to shift your left hip back appropriately, engaging your left adductor, your left inner thigh. And because of the position of your body, your left hamstring will probably be involved at least a little bit. You may not feel it, but it could be involved also. Uh, so I'm just gonna go over probably what I think most people, when they do it wrong or don't feel the proper things, this is usually what they're gonna be doing wrong. So I'm gonna show the wrong way to do it, uh, and then I wanna show the right way to do it. So I'm just gonna be commenting on it as you see. So the first thing you're gonna see is that my feet are on I don't have any shoes on. You should try it both ways, with sneakers and without sneakers, just to see, do you feel a difference? Because some people will feel it better one way or the other. It's always good to compare uh, one way versus the other way. So in this first video though, you'll see as I pick up my feet, uh, my feet are against a wall, but the wall has uh, molding on the bottom. You really don't want that. That's gonna put your feet at different levels which will put your femurs at different levels, which will put your hips at different levels. You want the wall to be flat. Uh, a lot of people say, well, I have no flat wall walls. Well, figure out a way to make it flat. If you, you know, put something up against the walls, that doesn't matter. But you want something against, you want your feet against a flat door, a flat wall that's not gonna slide, uh, that gives your feet the same position. You don't want them mispositioned because it's gonna misposition your joints also, and it's gonna throw off the whole technique. Okay, so that's part one. Part two, I'm positioned too far back. A lot of people don't realize in life, they're already leaning back quite a bit. They're arching, they're, they're extending, they're stuck in that position. So they lie down on the ground and they're kind of lying, lying down in a reclined position. In that position, you're not rounded enough. You're too extended. So when you shift your hip back, you're likely going to extend your back. So what you'll see is I'm going to adjust my position. I round myself a little bit more. You just kind of have to find that happy medium. Now you don't want to tuck your neck. So right there, uh, you saw my neck tucked down. You don't want to do that either. You want to keep, you want to round your back, but keep your neck in a neutral position. So you don't want to do this. That's going to put strain. It's just, it's going to strain you and you want to keep your neck with its natural curve, its natural lordosis. All right, the next one. Oh, I move my, so I move my foot back. If you watch my left foot, as I shift my left hip backwards, my foot moved and then I did it again and my foot did not move. So when you are shifting your hip back, you gotta make sure that your feet stay stacked. You don't, if this is the left foot, you don't wanna do this as you shift your left hip back. You wanna keep your feet planted, left heel, right arch, and shift, just shift your hip back without the foot moving because you're trying to use that ground to, for your brain to figure out how to activate your muscles. If you move your foot, you're no longer using the ground and the ground is the wall in this case. All right, in the next one, I am showing, I'm arching my back as I, sh as I hip shift. I hip shift and I arch. That is the problem to begin with. When you put your weight on your left leg, when you take a step and you put your weight on your left leg, because you've lost the ability to turn your pelvis to the left, means you can't shift into your left hip. So the only way you can put your weight on your left foot is by arching your back, and that's what I just showed. You can rewind it. Uh, as I shifted my left hip back, I arched. You don't want to arch your back. You only shift back to the point that you can without arching your back. If you arch your back, you're extending and you're going into the pattern, so that won't work. All right, the next clip I show what it should look like. You'll notice that I do not arch my back. I just shift the left hip back, and that's it. There's no arching of the back going on. All right, the next video, the next portion, 
Okay, sometimes people will shift their hip back and they roll their whole back, they roll their entire body backwards at the same time. So that's not what you want to do. You do not want to roll your whole body backwards. What you do want to do is keep your torso exactly as it is. I just pointed at my left shoulder. My left shoulder is not going to move. It stays. My left shoulder, my left arm stay. And because they're staying there, they're not rolling backwards as I shift my left hip back. What you're going to find is it has the added ability or it has the added benefit of keeping your left shoulder blade, your left scapula stable and you're shifting back and your rib cage should actually move back a little bit. Your so your rib, if this is the rib cage and this is the scapula, as you shift back, you're gonna get your rib cage to move into the scapula a little bit and make better placement, which could theoretically uh, reactivate your left scapular muscles in the appropriate position with the relationship of the scapula and the rib cage in the proper position. Because remember, the scapulas, even though this is a left hip shifting technique for the left inner thigh, if the pelvis moves, the rib cage should move also. If you have freedom in the back of this left mid back area and you hip shift back and as you inhale, you're doing that, that left mid back area should be expanding and moving backwards into the scapula. If you, if you hip shift and arch, your ribs move forward. And that's the exact opposite of what you want to happen. Now the rib cage is moving away from the scapula. And now you've got scapulas that their home base, this rib, because remember your scapulas sit on top of the rib cage. If you arch your back and your ribs move forward, now these scapulas have no foundation to sit upon. So if you're properly positioned, rounded, left scapula is staying stable because your left hand is staying flat on the ground and the left shoulder is staying in the proper position. When you hip shift, and inhale, because you're in a rounded back position, the rib cage expands with air and compresses onto the scapula. And that's really what we need to happen on both sides, but I'm just talking about the left side in this case. So if you ever hear about left posterior mediastinum expansion, it just really means left mid back expansion with air. That's why you need to do it uh, to get that rib cage to regain its appropriate relationship with the scapulas underneath. Uh, people who can't expand the rib cage, their shoulder blades are loose. They have no foundation upon which to sit, which means their neck is going to be overactive, their upper traps are going to be active, their SCMs, their levator scapulas, they're all going to be overactive to help try to stabilize that scapula that no longer has a foundation to sit upon. Okay? Oh, you want to make sure that your left ribs and left pelvis stay close together. You don't want them to fly apart when you inhale, which I'm gonna show right, I think I'm gonna show, there you go. See, I just had my, everything come apart. You don't wanna inhale and have your left ribs and left pelvis come further apart because we always wanna keep them close. We want that to occur on the right side, but the left side, they have to stay closer together uh, because otherwise you're not truly on your left side. The left. You're not, you, you won't have that left COA and you won't have that left AFIR. Uh, and also, use a ball. Don't use a foam roller. It won't work. You got to have a small ball. Uh, it's not the same thing. Uh, so don't use a foam roller. Don't use a book. Um, use a small ball. And if you do all those things, you should have much better outcomes with this uh, adductor scissor slide exercise.